I got Stubler. Today we got to look at the Suzuya 4. I got a Tago in this game. Uh, we got Reload Boost and Turret Traverse on there. If you don't have this one, I would always recommend Makawa for the Japanese cruisers. Traverse can be a little iffy, so you want that uh, ingenious Perkins slot number one. That'll tell you, number one, if you're getting targeted, which is a big uh, piece of important information for Japanese cruisers. And you get the better turret traverse, so that's a pretty easy call there. Uh, here we got Atlantic Domination Mode game. Now we're spawning on the side with the Destroyer here, so hoping to uh, get so basically cover him, uh, support him to capture A, but he's going to move into B, uh, duplicating the effort of the Destroyer that already spawned on B. So not a great open there, uh, but the kind of the too long didn't read version of this uh, is the Suzuya worth getting? Because uh, it's currently available as a green XP ship. A, lot, a couple of people have been asking me about it. Uh, the answer is yes. Okay, this is a very good ship. Uh, it's actually got the highest HE damage per minute output in Tier 7. Okay, and uh, by the way, it's tied with the Mogami as the highest torpedo damage per minute output uh, for Tier 7 cruisers as well. So, very potent ship here. This is one of those ships that we always say... Uh, if you got it spotted on the enemy team, you need to be shooting at it. Get it off the board as quick as possible. It's a good rule of thumb for all these uh, light cruisers that are going to be causing you problems, especially as destroyers. But anyone, you know, a lot of times these ships will be shooting battleships parked on the back, uh, and they're effective at doing that, setting a lot of fires, doing a lot of raw damage, and, you know, that's kind of the role that they're in here for. So, Unfortunately for us, there's no one moving into A. I'm still trying to cover it, though. We don't want to concede this cap necessarily. Both the guys that uh, spawn over here decided it's better for them to clump up in the middle. Big clump. Holy God, we got a big black hole over there between uh, B and C, apparently, uh, that everyone on our team seems to be getting sucked into. So not great positioning here from the Blues to start. Now, what you can see here, we're just trying to get in the position to send these torps down here. And Mogami, Suzuya, any of these uh, Japanese cruisers like this, if you got the torpedoes on both sides, they fire rearward, and that's on purpose. You're supposed to be pointing away from your enemies and then flip the ship. You know, get one side pointed out there, get the torps in the water, uh, flip it around, get the other side, launch the torps. Don't worry about aiming them. Send them into spots that you think you need to send them into, like B, that first launch we sent... A salvo of torpedoes into B, that's going to make it more dangerous for any destroyers that are in there trying to capture the base. And we got very long range torpedoes on these ships, so that's what they're designed to do. Um, you know, just get them in there, try and get them off on uh, reload as often as you can. And you might get lucky once in a while and get some damage from them, or more importantly, you're just making, uh, you're kind of controlling certain areas of the map kind of indirectly. That's kind of the point of these. Uh, so, not looking good here. We've conceded C. They've given up uh, B. Everyone on our team is kind of a backline Betty this game. This looks like an almost guaranteed loss, unless we uh, pull something out here. Atlanta rushing in here. Now, this is another light cruiser here. It's got a radar as well, uh, so we want to go ahead and get that off the board as quick as possible. Any radar cruisers, of course, high priority targets, basically as valuable as destroyers. Uh, so... They need to be shot at as quickly as possible. What you don't want to do, though, is what our destroyer's uh, attempting to do there. He's trying to rush the radar cruiser. Rushing cruisers as a destroyer in general. And here we're stuck briefly, uh, trying to wiggle out from this position. But, uh, you know, rushing those cruisers in general, not a good idea. And then if they're quick reloading light cruisers that have uh, sonars and radars, well... You're not going to have a good time here. So Benson, and he launches wide spreads at him. Holy God, that ain't going to work. Uh, so we're trying to keep him alive, uh, even though he's not playing it particularly properly. In my opinion, uh, the Destroyer is still valuable, but we're going to have a hard time uh, getting him uh, out of there alive since he's got a lot of guys shooting at him. Not the best uh, Destroyer play we've ever seen there, but a very common one. Rush everyone, quickly die, move on with your life. Typical Destroyer play in 2022. Atlanta, though, we're not trying to let up on him. We still want him off the board, and boom, and down he goes there. So we're off to a great start here. We're down two destroyers. We're down two caps. I don't have a hope of getting onto A because the Nagato's moving in there, and he can blow me up, uh, especially at close range like this. So now we're uh, forced to begin to assume like a kiting formation here. Uh, basically, we're going to be 
trying to slow down this Nagato and whatever else is coming over here. Trying to deal some damage first with this Edinburgh, but we got to begin to angle against this Nagato and begin to keep a very close eye on him as well. Once again, sending torpedoes, thinking, hey, he might want to shoot the cruiser. Uh, so if he turns to do that, maybe he'll go into that uh, zone there. Or you never know, maybe one of the destroyers on their team that haven't killed themselves quite yet uh, might be moving into A to try and capture that base. So that's what we're going to be doing there. But as the Nagato and anyone else that pursues us here, we want to be launching these torps basically on reload. So Edinburgh is getting low. We're trying to chime in with that one. Uh, but you'll see we keep kind of flipping around like a fish here and getting these torps in the water as quick as possible. So that's kind of a key part of the strategy with this, uh, these type of ships. Uh, so now our uh, big critical mass black hole did move into C and capture that. So that's a good development. Okay, we're still struggling with A. I'm trying to get some resets over here, but... Um, we got to be worried about protecting ourselves, and we got a Nachikov moving in. Uh, so we get those torpedoes off into that gap, and then we once again angle away from the Nagato. We're getting spotted. He's got a shot at us, even though we can't see him until just now. Uh, that doesn't mean we're safe from him, so we need to be focused on him at all times. We want to be pointing away from these guys. Number one, if you're sailing away, they have to shoot further to actually hit you than you do to hit them. That's the advantage you have as a defending player who's kiting away from them um, but also if we're kind of angled like that then the shells that are going horizontally a lot of them will miss that way so that's kind of the game plan here you can see we're trying to angle I'm trying to move to the right of the screen because the longer we can have the Ochka blocked uh, the less time we'll spend in the 2v1 two, two which is what we're doing now both Ochkov and Nagato can shoot at us um, but we are potentially exposed to the north now I've evaluated the map we don't see any threats that are likely to be able to hit us there, but when we are focused on this, you always got to be keeping an eye on the cross-map threats. Look at that. Why are we aiming there? Well, these guys aren't going to be sailing in a straight line for a minute at a time, right? So he's just as likely to turn hard to the right, especially since he knows we're torping here. Uh, he's just as likely to do that as he is to turn hard to the left, right? So you can just throw these down. Once again, we're just making the area behind us, which is where these guys are trying to be, more dangerous. They don't know if the torps are going to go on right, left, up the gut. Um, you want to vary it up, shake it up, and see if you can get lucky here. Uh, we are flipping the guns around here. We're steeply angled there. Ochkov scoring some shots. This is a difficult fight. Uh, both these ships can pump all the damage. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on his positioning here. And if he continues to flash broadside like that, well, potentially we'll uh, flip over to the AP shells. Keep launching the HE, though. See if we can whittle, whittle him down here a little bit. And now we've flipped over to the AP. And he's in his screen, he's been seeing, you know, orange glows of HE for several samples. So he's a little bit less threatened by the AP threat. And we'll quickly correct that mistake for him. Um, you just... It's always a gamble. Like, if the guy you're fighting and has been shooting HE, shooting HE, shooting HE, well, you can gamble that he just shoots that because that's all he likes to shoot, or you can gamble that, uh, well, that's been the shell he's shooting because you've been angling. So if you want to get those back guns in play like you did there, uh, you're putting the risk out. And that risk is greater on quicker reloading light cruisers like the Suzuya. So once again, we uh, begin to turn our attention to Nagato. Now look at our position on the map here. We're technically a backline Betty at this point in time. Uh, but what we've been doing, we lost A, right? But we were trying to slow down A. And then we had two ships that captured A, Achikov, Nagato. Now we're dragging them into a relevancy. Because from their perspective, they got A and they got B, the middle. So their strategy should be vigorously defend B. Uh, and A should be basically unreachable for our team. But because Achikov and Nagato are both drawn over here away from what matters, that's still a scoring play. It's a good strategy, and if you can get your opponents to do it, uh, so be it. You know, Again, we would like to be more centrally located at all point in time, but we effectively remove two of the remaining ships uh, from relevancy. Nagato is kind of uh, shaped up. He's fighting our team, but once again, you can see we are now being targeted. He's getting sick of us here. We slam on the brakes trying to dodge. Uh, drop a salvo there, and we resume firing on the Nagato. I mean, these are very frustrating to play against, but you can see currently we're not, once again, being targeted. He missed one shot. He's like, okay, can't hit him. I guess I'll go back to shooting battleships. Practice these shots, guys. If you can't, you know, there's some cruiser players, and I'm deliberately doing everything I can to dodge. I'm 
trying to make it hard on this guy. But, you know, you got to be able to practice these things. If you can't hit destroyers, practice shooting the destroyers. If you can't hit cruisers that are dodging, try and predict what are they going to do. Or, you know, try and get in their mind and then change your shell. Just assume they're not going to be sailing in a straight line because they've demonstrated time and time again. They're dodging. Okay, well, let's anticipate the dodge. Adjust your strategy. All right, so we turned this around here. It looked really grim early. We were down two destroyers, down two caps. Um, we've been down two caps most of the game, but we are correcting that. Uh, the, and that's kind of what you want to be doing when you're on the weak side, like we were, right? We spawned on A, we had three ships, but we created a weak side out of thin air by running away. Uh, the two guys that spawned with us, and because we kind of stayed in the area and assumed a defensive posture, i.e. the kiting one, we slowed them down. They didn't get A as quickly as possible. We wound up killing the guys that got A, and now we're actually moving back into the base to reassert control over it. So that's what we're trying to do. Meanwhile, that's we're just hoping that our team that uh, created a mismatch numerically on the other side, we give them time to do what they want, right? They had an 8v2 or 3 or whatever it was, and sooner or later they got their act together, pushed into them, killed them, and they've been gradually kind of eating up the red team as we've been slowing down the activity on the western side. So it's very tempting if you're seeing your teammates uh, ditch a side to just throw in the towel and be like, okay, if I can't beat them, let's join them, and you run away as well. Then you'll concede the cap. Then you'll start getting crossfired because they'll push through um, into the base side that you spawned on, and you'll be uh, you're playing a very short game at that point in time because your team will get absolutely wiped out. But if you can slow them down... Yeah, we still lost A. We didn't really have a chance to fully defend it, but we slowed them down, wound up leaning on them, taking their health down, killing them, and now we've kind of helped turn the game around. So this is going to be a pretty high-scoring game for the Suzuya, and it's a nice ship. So if you like the cruisers, and basically, I forgot to mention, it's basically a Megami with the lighter caliber uh, gun. So if you like Megami or Japanese cruisers, you want know, the quick-firing guns here, here's your chance. I don't think the ship will be around too much longer, so grab it while you can. That's a look at the Suzuya for you. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all there. Peace!